Hi guys, you are welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, I'm AY and I'm a first year medical student of Ladu Gatola University. So if you are new to my channel, please and please do well to subscribe and click on the notification bell so as to get notified anytime I drop a new video. In today's video, I'll be making a series of um, things to note about practical exam in YA and the last one I did was about physics. So today we are going to be looking at the biology aspects. Now, biology aspect is the most easiest aspect of all practicals. Like I can say that because you don't actually have anything to um, experiment, you don't have much to do. Or, or what they will just give you the specimen. Then they have to examine the specimen. They give you certain questions on all those things. Now, before your exam, your teacher will have like give you a kind of hint about the common specimen that you will be given in the exam. Now, having seen this. What are the things that you have to do? The best thing is for you to make inquiries about all the necessary specimens, that is, all the necessary questions that they may have, that they may ask. I will advise you to either make use of your past question because this same specimen that you'll be given might have been like they will have used it in one year, in the past year. So you just check your past question, check wherever they ask, um, they've used it before, the necessary question they ask, then work on it. That's just um, one part. Now, the next part is you knowing the particular specimen and knowing under which aspect, under which category does it belong to. For the practicals, we have different parts, and one of the parts is you may be given insects. Like, you may be asked to examine insects. One of your specimens may be insects. It may either be fruits, it may be um, measuring instruments, it may be whatever, it may be plants, it may be stem. So, what or what they will just ask you is just necessary things about the specimen. Now, let's assume you are given an insect, cockroach, for an example. What are the necessary things that they are going to ask about this? They are going to ask for the five kingdom, they, will, they may ask for the phylum, they may ask for the class, and at times they may only ask for phylum and class alone. Then you already know that your um, insect is from which kingdom? Kingdom Animalia is from which phylum? Then the phylum, the, from the phylum Arthropoda, then the class, from the class Insecta. So those are necessary things that you have to know about the kingdom, phylum and class. Another one is metamorphosis. They may ask you questions on the metamorphosis of, the, of that particular insect. That is, does it undergo complete and, or incomplete? So if you are given any insects in your specimen, these are the things that you have to know. Like, you must note them. The um, phylum, the class, then the uh, metamorphosis, is it complete or incomplete? Another one is the economic importance of this particular insect. Now, when we talk about economic importance, let me explain this. Some students do think maybe when we talk about economic importance, it's just like the positive effect of that particular specimen. No, that's very wrong. Economic importance deals with both positive and negative aspects. That is, I may tell you that one of the economic importance of cockroach is that it destroys our food material. Yes, it's very correct. When we talk about economic importance, it deals with both positive and negative aspects. So don't make the mistake of th like thinking maybe it's only positive aspects. Because if you are thinking maybe it's only for positive aspects, you may end up not seeing any answer to write for the economic importance. Because if you are to check cockroach and other insects now, house fly, what are the importance? Uh, what are their importance for us? Like they don't have much importance. But for uh, the positive, for, for I mean for the negative aspects, we may say house fly causes cholera. So that's still one of the economic importance. So please and please, if you see that in the exam, just note that economic importance deals with both positive and negative side. Another thing that you have to know about them is their habitats. Where do they live? Know their habitats, know their features, like they may have to the observable, observable features. Now when we talk about observable features, they are the features that you can observe with your um, these blue eyes. Now, features is divided into two. We have observable features and we have adaptive features. When we talk about observable features, there are the features that you can see with your like with your naked eyes, seeing that particular organism. But for the um the second aspect, which is the adaptive features, they are the features that that particular organism used to adapt to its habitat. So that's adaptive feature. Okay, let's take um toad for an example. As an observable feature, what are the things that we see in toad? It has a scaly um skin, it has a poisonous gland and all. Then, if we now talk about um, the adaptive features, that is what makes it to adapt to its environment. It has a moist skin, that is for it to live in a moist environment. Another one is that it has its lower limb, so and all other um, necessary things. So that's what we talk, 
that's what we, what we call um, adaptive features and observable features. Now, another thing you might be asking if you are given a specimen, like if your specimen is based on measuring instruments, what like the major thing they will ask you about it is just the use and the diagram. That's just all about it. The use and the diagram. Let's assume you are given a quadrant or a sweep net or um, wind vane or whatever. All what they will just ask you in it is what the use is and what's the um diagram like you should draw it now i will still talk about the diagram in another episode another one that you might be given is fruit if you are given any specimen like any fruit in your specimen what are the necessary things that they will ask you the first thing you have to note is which type of fruit i mean what name of that fruit that's one then which type of fruit when we talk about fruit, uh, they will ask you that you should categorize those fruits. That which type of fruit is this? Which let's assume you are given an apple. You know that apple is from um, is comb. Uh, if you are given um, okra, you know that okra okra is from capsule. So those those are necessary things. There, there was one here that they asked about this plant, Trida's Trida's flower. That is which type of fruit? So it's from side cellar. So all those necessary things you should know them. All your side cellar uh, capsule uh, akin home um and all other necessary ones just make sure that you know them before going for your exam i mean once you check your specimen then know which type of fruit is that particular fruit another thing you should note about fruit is the placentation like the placentation they do ask which type of placentation does this fruit have is it azai is it based basa is it um free central and all so you should note the type of Placentation of that fruit before going for the exam. Once you've been given the specimen, just go through them. And these are the things that you even have to know, even without knowing the specimen at all. Another thing that you have to know about fruit is the germination. We have two main types of germination. We have um hypogeal and epg germination. So you check which type of germination is for this particular plant. You all know that epg um uh, you all know the examples of epg and the examples of hypog and you know their definition, so you can just use that to decode what your answer will be. Another thing that they do ask about the fruit is the importance of that fruit, what are the importance of them, what do we get from them, so what are the nutrients getting from that particular fruit, what are their importance. Another thing that they ask is observable features, that is what you can see, and observable differences. Now, they may be, they may classify two different fruits, let's assume you have uh, tomato and orange now. Then they may ask you that what are the observable differences? That is the difference between the two. Red, tomato is red, orange is this, this one is this, that one is that. So just note that what are the things you can see that are different, and there are, I mean things that you can see in this that is not in the other one, and things that is in the other one that is not in this. So those are what we call observable difference. Me knowing all these things, I think you should be able to apply all these to all the necessary um specimen that you might be, be given. You might not be given um. I mean, for the necessary specimen that you might be given, you might even be given maybe just an egg. You might be given maybe a rabbit, a small sheep. So this that particular specimen that you are given, browse a lot of things about them. If you are given a plant, know their botanical name. There are some you are given cassava. Know the botanical name. There are no other species of um that particular plants let's assume cassava now know the botanical name um if you are given a rice as one of your specimen know the botanical name know the importance know the class of food it is so those are necessary things that you have to know for you to pass your biology right there. as i said earlier it's very simple like it's the easiest just write everything you know about them and all what they are going to ask you will not be more than all the things i've mentioned they will ask for your placentation their types of germination um, class other uh, phylum class, um, kingdom, metamorphosis, diagrams, observable features, observable differences. So those are the necessary things that they are going to ask. Now let's move to the diagram aspects. What are the things that you have to know? The diagram is also very important because diagram do carry 10 marks, like complete 10 marks. They may ask you for the phylum or the class of a particular insect, then they award it to just one mark. That's very simple. But for your diagram, you are, you are going to have at least two diagram it, it can be more i think it can be more than two sharp or oh, you are going to have two diagrams in your practical and this each of them is going to carry 10 mark so know that and know this each of them is going to carry 10 mark now how are they going to award this 10 marks let me now explain let me make the breakdown the first thing that you have to note when you are going for your biology practical is that you must go in with at least one pencil that is not just one pencil but two because there might be like you may not be chance for you to be changing pencil and when one is done you have to change 
it to the other one. Another thing is that your pencil must be very sharpened, like a very sharpened pencil, not the one that will be that will have two lines whenever you are using it to draw. So it must just have one um a trace. Another thing you have to know is your eraser and your blade. I think you should know that already. There's no need of telling you that anymore. Now, when you now start your drawing, you must make sure that your drawing. I mean, your um, question paper is not too rough, like it has to be neat, your diagram has to be neat. Then, um, the second aspect is there must, like, there must not be broken lines in your diagram, that is the lines must be straight. Not that you will draw one, then it gets to one point, you stop, then you see, um, start again. Even if that will happen, you must make sure that it's very straight, like there's no traces of broken line. When there is broken line in your diagram, then we are going to reduce your mark and do that how they start to reduce the the 10 marks even though you know the particular diagram very well but those are the necessary things that you have to know so that to get your full mark another thing that you have to note is that the thing and not be too thick so when you are drawing not that you will um, the edge of your pencil will be too thick so it must just be thick thin you just want to see the trace of that particular diagram then for you to be neat so once all these things are being noted and you are going to have all your scores like what necessary things that your marker is supposed to mark you are going to have them once they check the needs labeling and your labeling labeling is very important when we talk about label your label must like it must touch the exact parts that you are labeling not that you want to label um a nucleus then your line will now just it will just enter this cell then it won't touch the exact place that you are that you want to label exactly so that's very very wrong your labeling must touch each part that you want to label if you want to label the nucleus make sure that your line enters from the nucleus then and another thing is that your labeling must be practical like it must be straight not that it should be scattered one will be like this another one will be like this another one will not be like this another one will be like this no if it's going to be straight like this everything must be like this like this like this like this i think you can see the diagrams in your textbooks so it must be straight that's the correct labeling because labeling also carries its own mark so don't just think maybe you are just there to just draw for them and label uh, for the case whereby your um, the label may be under so you have to make a line then bring it out so make a line so that it, it's going to be parallel with other ones i mean it's going to be in the same position with other ones so those are the things that are going to award you your mark your full mark now after drawing the diagram what are the next thing you have to note the magnification of the diagram is also very very important please don't forget all these things these are the things as i said earlier in the physics aspect that your marker is just looking for your mistakes so where it's going to deduct your mark that's what it's looking for so your magnification and what magnification is just all about is you just check the specimen you are given you see what you just drawn you see times two or times three you see times half like if the specimen you are given is smaller than what you draw, you just say times two. That is what you draw is times two or times three of the specimen. Now another one that you are given that you must note, another thing you must note is your lip, I mean your tie two. So after dry, drawing everything, just write it under that drawing of specimen so so so. Then write this particular specimen in bracket or diagram of so so so. Now back to the diagram aspect before you draw at all i think i was supposed to mention this earlier they will give you that you must draw a draw a well labeled diagram of 8 to 10 centimeter or wherever this these things like these things should not be joked with the exact centimeter the exact length that they give you is what you should draw if you draw more than that i promise you if you meet with a strict marker if the person actually measures it or just check that it's like it's more than the um the length that it stays for you they may not mark it at all like they may not mark it for you at all so don't just do pass yourself if you are given to if you have to draw between 8 to 10 or 10 to 12 make sure that it's between that 10 to 12 that is it's going to start from 10 you can draw from 10 to 10.1 or to 11.9 or to 12 exactly so yeah, and it must also not be less than 10 you must not draw 9.9 .9. so your diagram must be with, between the length of 1 to 10 or to 10 points um i mean up to 12.0 so anything so if they have to draw 10 to 12 and your uh, diagram is now 
12.5 that's just like you just don't more than what they ask you to do so you should avoid that those are the necessary things that you have to avoid for you to get your full mark and please note everything i've mentioned is not like should i say those are the necessary things i may not say i've mentioned all so if there is anyone that you still observe you can just drop it in the comment section so those are the necessary things and i think someone like i've gained something from this um, particular video so if you are still watching to this point Please and please do where to share to others that may need this video. So see you in my next video. For the chemistry aspect, it will also be dropped very soon. But I will make sure I drop everything before you start your exam. See you in my next video. Bye.